Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Really excited today because this is a video I wanted to make for quite some time. As so many companies are trying to reduce their cloud cost, today I'm going to walk you through how to use spot instances in your Kubernetes cluster. So let's dive into it. So there are three major things we are going to do. First, of course, we are going to use the spot instances. And then we are going to configure the autoscaler priority for our cluster. And then we are going to use some Kiverna policies to make our lives a little easier. So now let's look at these things one at a time and understand what they are doing. Okay, so what are spot instances? Usually a cloud provider has a lot of unused compute resources just sitting around and waiting to be claimed by a consumer. So to offset the loss of their idle infrastructure, these cloud providers offer this excess capacity at a very high discount rates. So here we are looking at the price comparison for Azure Kubernetes service. And you can see that we can get up to 90% discount rate for these compute resources as compared to other pricing model. So in this demo, I'm using Azure Kubernetes service, but same steps can be applied to AWS EKS or GKE for Google. So I already have a Kubernetes cluster here, but I do not have any spot nodes at the moment. So first, I'm going to add a new spot node pool to use a spot nodes. We'll give it a name, and then we'll select a VM size. And after that, we'll select this checkbox to make sure it's a spot node pool. And let's review all the details and information. And then let's create our new node pool. It will take a few minutes for this uh, new node pool to show up. So I'll see you in a second. Now let's uh, look at the details for our new node pool. And if you see on the right side, under taints and labels, there is a taint and label added to our node pool. So understand that anytime you create a spot node, they're going to have these taints and labels. And because of this taint, it won't allow pods to get scheduled on these nodes by default. So we'll have to add tolerations to our pods in order to utilize these spot nodes. So just remember this for now, and we'll come back to it in a few minutes. Okay, now let's talk about the cluster autoscaler priority. When there is a new pod that needs to be scheduled and there is no capacity left on any existing nodes, the autoscaler brings up a new node where it can schedule the pod. So the priority expander allows us to configure the priority based on which the autoscaler will add the new nodes. So how does it help us with spot nodes? Because we want to maximize the use of spot nodes to reduce our cost, we can configure spot nodes with a higher priority than other node pools. So here we have a very simple config map for priority expander. Make sure the config map is named cluster autoscaler priority expander. And it must be created in the same namespace as the cluster autoscaler pod, which is typically cube system. And we are configuring the priority for the default node pool to 10 and spot node pool to 50. So let's apply this manifest to our cluster. And now if we check all the config maps in the cluster, there should be our priority expander config map with our configured values. So that's all we have to do for the autoscaler priority. And I'll show you its behavior just in a few minutes. Now let's actually deploy some pods. Here we have a very simple manifest, nothing special. So let's apply this manifest. And if we check the default namespace, we can see the pod is deployed and it's scheduled on the default node, which makes sense because we have not added any tolerations on our pod. So let's add the toleration on the pod template and make sure you have the correct key and effect in the toleration for your cloud provider. And now let's reapply this manifest. And if we check the pods again, we can see that the new pod is now getting scheduled on the spot nodes. So the toleration is taking effect. But what I want to show you is just because there's a toleration, that doesn't mean our pods will always get scheduled on the spot nodes. So if we increase the replica count on our deployment and reapply this manifest, 
Here we can see that some pods are getting scheduled on spot nodes and some on the default nodes. And that's because when you add a toleration, a pod can get scheduled on the spot node that has the matching taint. But there's no guarantee that scheduler is going to schedule the pod on those nodes. So in order to maximize the use of our spot nodes, we are going to add the node affinity in addition to the toleration. Here, I'm adding the preferred affinity instead of required. So the scheduler will try to schedule the pod on the existing spot nodes first. And if no spot node has the capacity for the pod, then it will try to schedule the pod on the default node pools. The weight range is between 1 to 100, 100 being the highest. The key and value here in the expression needs to match with the node labels. So if you remember on our spot nodes, we get these taints and labels. We added the toleration for the taint and for the node affinity, we are going to use the labels. Okay, now let's reapply this manifest. And now we can see that all of our replicas are getting scheduled on the existing spot node. Now let's look into Kiverno. If you are not already aware of it, Kiverno is a policy engine for Kubernetes which allows us to write various types of policies for our Kubernetes resources. You can check out their documentation where they already have a bunch of different policies. So why are we using Kiverno? In our deployment, we had to add this toleration and node affinity for the spot node utilization. But imagine a real world scenario where you might have hundreds of different types of workloads. And it's not really feasible to add these tolerations and node affinity to each deployment or pod. So that's why we are going to delegate this job to Kiverno. We're going to write a mutate type of Kiverno policy that will inject the tolerations and node affinity to any deployment object when it's created. And these policies are really powerful because it gives you the control of which type of workload you want to deploy on spot nodes. So before we apply this policy, let's install Kiverno on our cluster using Helm. And let's also make sure that all the Kiverno components are deployed and ready. And now finally we can apply our policy. Now let's uh, go back to our deployment manifest. And I'm going to comment out these tolerations and node affinity. And we're going to reapply this manifest and let Kiverno handle it for us. Okay, now we can see that our pods are deployed to the spot nodes. And if we edit the pod definition and search for tolerations, we can see that the toleration is there. And if we scroll up just a little bit, we can also see the node affinity. So that means our Kiverno policy is working as we expected. And definitely check out Kiverno because there are so many different things you can do with these policies. And now I'm going to show you the behavior of the autoscaler priority. I'm going to increase the replica count and hopefully that will trigger a cluster autoscaler. So let's uh, reapply this manifest. And now if we check our pods, we can see that some of them are in pending state. So let's describe one of these pods and uh, let's check for the events. Here we can see a scale up event triggered by the cluster autoscaler. And it's trying to bring up another spot node. If we go back and list the nodes, we can see a new spot node is being added to our cluster. So that tells me that our autoscaler priority is also working as expected. So before we wrap up this video, I also want to make sure you understand when to use the spot nodes. You see, spot nodes can be evicted at any time by the cloud providers. So you can just run any type of workloads on these nodes. So you have to be careful and choose the workloads that are very false tolerant. So here are a few examples on the slides, but in the end, you'll have to figure out what type of applications you have in your organization that is suitable for spot nodes. So 
I really hope this uh, video was useful. And if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them if I can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.